What is UTF-8 and what is UTF-16? Are these important or can you ignore them? Today we'll talk a little bit about those encodings, what they mean, where they come from, and also what you can use to work with them and why it's sometimes important to know what they are and to pick the right one. Let's move on to where they come from. They come from how to encode text. And text in that case means either text for humans, readable documents with text in there, or for computers, computer formats such as JSON or XML. In both of these cases, those documents or computer formats are based on text. They use text characters to capture meaning in some shape or form. And how to do that is a question of what are the characters that the text is using. And when you think about it, this quickly gets you to the point where you start thinking about how many characters do I need, which is the character set that I need for my information to be represented. And you quickly run into those situations where one byte is not enough to store your characters, meaning that this simple idea of storing one character per byte or storing each character in exactly one byte won't work anymore. And this is where Unicode enters the picture. Unicode has been around for a long time. It was started back in 1988. And it started with this idea of being, being a universal format for encoding characters. It has a very big potential character repertoire. It can encode 1.1 million different characters. In the latest version, which came out in September 21, version 14, it has 145,000 characters that are defined, but these already are, of course, as you can see, many more than the 256 characters that you can encode in one byte. And because of this, Unicode comes with different, what's called encodings, and UTF-8 and UTF-16 are two of those encodings, by far the most popular ones nowadays. There's another thing called UTF-32, but this one I think really isn't used all that much. Now, what are these encodings um, and how do they differ? UTF-8 is called like this because it's kind of based on the assumption that you start encoding when possible as 8-bit characters, 8-bit bytes, but you can only do that for so many characters. And what UTF-8 does is it says for a small set of characters, like the traditional ASCII characters, the 128 first characters, so to speak, in a character set, you encode them as one byte. But then there is a mechanism where other characters get encoded in two bytes, three bytes, or even four bytes. This means that, that UTF-8 is relatively complex, but it also means that let's say, regular texts with very simple ASCII-based character repertoires can be encoded in a very compact way because it's still one byte per character. That makes it pretty compact. Now, you can contrast this with UTF-16. And in UTF-16, what you have is a more predictable way how characters get encoded because most get encoded in two bytes. But that means that they need twice as much space. So even ASCII characters get encoded as two bytes, meaning that they just take up much more space. So the advantage of UTF-16 is that it's less complex. It's a little bit more predictable in terms of the length of the text that you produce. The disadvantage is that for, let's say, regular texts with a lot of ASCII characters, text gets represented typically in a much more uh, bulky way, right? You have, you have much bigger files. Now let's look at that in a very simple demo. And we'll do this by first creating a file, let's call this demo.text, and we'll put in there some text that has two special characters in there. One is an A umlaut character, and the other one is the euro sign. So if we look at this, then you can see, okay, we have eight characters in this text. If, and we, when we look at this file in the file system, then you can see that it takes up 12 bytes. Eight characters, but it takes up 12 bytes. In order to find out why that is the case, we can use a simple utility, which I think is very useful, which is called OD for actor dump. And we tell it to please show us ASCII character values and to please also show us um, 
the hexadecimal values of the bytes that it's showing. And we do that and now we can see what these 12 bytes look like. So what we have is we have OK and then the A umlaut already gets represented as two bytes because it's not an ASCII character. Then we have a couple more ASCII characters including the space character, the one, and then the euro sign gets actually encoded in three bytes. So it's quite a bit bigger because it's pretty far back in the Unicode character repertoire. And then because it's Unix, this one here is Mac OS, the files are always terminated with a new line character. So this is a very simple way how you can just look at what a file looks like. Now let's convert this file and there's another interesting con uh, utility that you might want to look at which is called iConf and we can say we want to convert from UTF-8 and we were to want to convert to UTF-16. We want to convert the demo file and we want to convert it let's say to demo 16. Now we'll do that and now let's see what this looks like. So we'll do the same thing. We'll look at it in the file system and then when you look at this here, what you can see, it has 20 bytes. So it's already quite a bit bigger. Now let's look at it with our OD utility. And when we look at it now, what you can see is that this here is a little bit curious. We won't go into the details of this. This is called a byte order mark. This is what UTF-16 files should start with. But then we have the K here, we have the a umlaut, so to speak, we have the S, we have the E, and you see all these zeros in between here, right? And this is how UTF-16 kind of pads those characters to get to be two bytes long. And if you have ASCII characters, right, that's a lot of waste because you have always these null bytes in there that really don't carry a lot of meaningful information, but because of the format, it needs to be in there. And then we have the same thing here where we have the um, the ending new line, which is this one here, and we have the euro sign, which is also encoded as just two bytes. So this makes it really easy for us to understand what's going on. And what I recommend is that if you are using UTF-8 or UTF-16, then in most cases, I would say UTF-8 is the better choice because it tends to be smaller for most cases, not always, but for most cases, and you'll have good support for it everywhere. You also have good support for UTF-16 everywhere because these are the two encodings that every Unicode implementation sh must support. But I think an important thing to always keep in mind is both of these encodings, UTF-8 and UTF-16, they can encode the full character repertoire. So there's nothing that gets lost when you use one format over the other. It's just that you end up with a slightly different compromise in length over complexity. And maybe you're looking at what, what my tooling works better with or faster with or whatever. So you have to take that into account. I think it's important to understand what these encodings are at least roughly speaking, as, as far as we looked into this, not exactly how they work, but like why they exist and, and what the result looks like. And then you can make an informed decision and then you can always choose the right tooling so that you can use either the one format or the other. You can convert between those two and then I think things will work out well for you. So with that, we're done for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want more Unicode content, if you're interested in the history of Unicode, if you're interested in character encodings in general, please let me know in the comments. Then um, I, I really find this topic fascinating. So I'd be more than happy to do that if there's some interest. And that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. And until the next time, bye-bye.